we have a little bit of unexpected work to do. Unexpected because I wasn't actually planning on potting any of these orchids up for the winter months. I was going to wait until it gets a little bit warmer where I can control the rot a little bit. However, there have been some developments that have made me change my mind. And I've been thinking about a different way of setting these orchids up so that I can control whatever humidity or wet climate could be around the base. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you enjoy this video. It should be straightforward because I've thought about it for quite some time now. But you know, thinking is not doing and the execution could be a little bit more fiddly and more complicated. I very much doubt it, but you never know. Anywho, what we're dealing with today is Van der Glossum Alexandra 2.0. This one I got from Michael McCarthy and Larry Jones. Thank you to the two of you for her. I want her to live and that's why I am going to be addressing this orchid today. I also have Lelia Vasconcelosiana here. That is a Rapiculus Lelia and I got her from Matt by Nature as well as Lelia or Catlia Santhina. So thank you Matt by Nature also for these two. Now they've been babied since their arrival in an ICU setup and I've been hoping to make sure that I would get some root tips and well I did get some roots to stay alive but root tips not just yet. This is the Santhina that came unfortunately with a broken new growth. So I've just let it dry out. It's still attached. It's not even popping off easily and I didn't want to mess around. But since then she has grown a second new growth, which is awesome. And I am anticipating roots from this one. So maybe getting her in the ground, so to speak, is not such a bad idea at this point in time. The main reason why I'm doing what I'm doing, even though I hadn't planned on doing it, was because I do not want my... Vasconcelosiana to rot out and I've had a little bit of issues with some mold happening at the base trying to keep some humidity around the base with my hob filter right there which is my sphagnum moss substitute and it was getting a bit concerning and I don't think that me doing this all winter long is going to help this orchid at all, even though she's just grown this new growth right there. Now I'm expecting roots from her, but if I keep moving her around, and the winter shuffle is going to be a lot of moving around, some of my little ICU orchids may be best off in a pot not getting moved. Secondly, that also applies to my Van der Glossum Alexandra here, because Look at what Madam is doing. She's growing root tips. I am not going to be able to protect these root tips if I keep moving her in the basket, trying to keep her safe. I'm going to lose that growing point very, very quickly. So my interim solution was, I got this little semi-hydro pot that I had a Rapiculus Lelia in that unfortunately didn't make it. And I put her in this pot with a little bit of water at the base just to make sure that she hydrates and I am not misting around the base of the orchid because that is how I lost her predecessor. So very gently putting her back into the orchid top because that is where she's going to go. This was just to be able to keep a little bit of water at the base for that root tip and to hydrate the orchid. I also have all my materials lined up. Like I said, I try to plan this so that it's pretty straightforward. Not waste your time, but I appreciate that you're here if you're going to watch the whole process. The reason I have these two baskets here is because I'm not sure whether this little basket is going to be good enough to hold the Vasconcelosiana in place. That is going to be her little stability nest while she grows into the pot, which I hope she's going to do. And I was going to do the same with my Santhina, but I think her roots are fine and long enough to hold her in position. But these little baskets, I was going to thread the roots into them and keep them as a stability factor. I thought that would work super well. Right. What I'm going to do now at the first call port of action is deal with my Vandoglossum Alexandra. And you know what? I am not fiddling her out of that pot. 
absolutely not. This is not the time to do it. And check this out. What do we got here? I just saw this. Is that a spike? I think Madam wants to spike. Oh, this is fantastic. You see, she had spiked before. And if this is a spike, well, her predecessor spiked around about this time as well. But of course, she had some transportation shock. So, dog hair is optional. Personally, I try to avoid it. And then eventually, it happens anyway. Because I have a very poofy dog. A German Spitz with hair growing everywhere. Right. What I want to do, first of all, because I'm going to be putting large lava rock all around my Van der Glossum, is put a little bit of ceramis at the base for the wicking. Just a little bit. Just so that water goes up because lava rock doesn't wick. Lava rock just has a fantastic ratio of retaining water. All the nooks and crannies. And then I want to check the height where I want her at and how much lava rock I'm going to put in next. Keep her a little bit lower. That looks about right. Maybe what I'm going to do is make a little ledge for her. You see, even lava rock comes optional with dog hair. I know, I, it's funny, but sometimes it really annoys me, especially when I'm taking images and I can't see that fine little hair from Baloo with the naked eye. And suddenly I put the image up on a big screen and there's Baloo's hair. Most annoying. So if we just raise her up like that on her little lava rock ledge, we're good to go. Cut that old root off? No, nope. it's no biggie. Just make sure that she's positioned well. And then, rock by rock, I'm going to be filling around her. Starting around the orchid to the left, getting her stable so I do not abrade or risk the root tip. There we go. Now, yes, this is pedantic, but it is worth it if we get it right. That's better. Okay. Whoa. Next up, I want to tackle my Vasconcelosiana. I want to see if that basket works. I have a semi-hydro little pot here. A Rapiculus Lelia setup as I would prefer to have it. Normally should have like lava rock at the bottom, but I'm running out of big lava rock, so I'm spreading out the resources. So I'm using large lecker to crock the base just to get to the holes. And then I'm gonna put my tag in straight away. So Whatever jiggling we're going to do, the tag won't affect it after the fact. And then the plan is, with the basket, 
to pot her up just like that, even though she's pretty rootless. We have a little bit of a root nubbin maybe starting right there. Waits to be seen. But you know, just like that and fill the media around the basket. Let her grow into the basket, I don't mind. And I think this basket is the perfect size. So what I'm gonna do is raise up that barrier a little bit with some large lava rock. This is just a continuation of the crocking. See if we can get something stable in there. And then put some ceramus around it. Basket and all. Literally potting up a pot. Straightforward, but yeah, it's a bit of a fiddle. it a little easier and now I'm going to fill around just with my you know decorative top dressing of smaller lava rock like I have all my rapiculus lalias so the idea being here that there's a lot of humidity coming up from the base because of the ceramics but me not moving the orchid for the foreseeable future and hopefully get roots to grow down into the pot. If I would stop bumping the pot because once we have her in position, I bump it and then, you know, it moves around again. It would help to be less klutzy at some point in time when it comes to the orchid hobby. That would be really useful. I'm just positioning lava rock around the orchid to keep her stable. Now she doesn't live outside. Clearly she is not ready or up for it. But this is the most stable she's been since I've had her, even though I hardly moved the ICU setup. There was no need to move it, but I like what I'm seeing and that's gonna be good enough for me. And now we just hope that she can settle in. And let's move on to the Xanthina. Now, normally I like all my cattleyas to be in a lecker and self-watering setup. Clearly, she's so tiny, I don't have this small pot with an insert pot. So I'm going to have to deal with her in this setup as a semi-hydro setup indoors. Well, she'll rest on a humidity tray. It is only temporary because if she does well, eventually she will graduate to lecker and self-watering. But because of the circumstances and going into winter, I want her to stay dry around the base and encourage root growth. Lekka has evaporative cooling in it, and yeah, it's gonna be cold anyway. Seeing as this one is so delicate, I don't want to ruin any chance of this new growth growing roots and getting her established. She is just going to go into this semi-hydro setup with the small lava rock that I normally use for top dressing. This way I can control her better. We don't have any root tips. She's accustomed to a wet dry cycle up to now. That's been her ICU setup since she arrived. And with the lava rock, I can control a wet dry cycle as well. and one or two dead roots, it doesn't matter. I can't really say that they're serving much of a purpose for anchoring either, but at least something is better than nothing. She has viable roots, so it's not like she can't absorb anything. And we will be providing some water straight away. There we go. 
Right, let me clean up and let's have a look at them. Let's start with candidate number one. I do believe that is a spike. That is fantastic. So you saw me build around the root tip that's at the base. The lava rock around the base of that root tip is damp. I did that on purpose because I'm not going to be watering this orchid in just now. Maybe tomorrow, but I use damp lava rock all around the base, touching the ceramis, which is also damp. And then I built up to drier lava rock. So there's plenty of humidity in this pot. We have another gorgeous root tip that we should monitor from here on in because this one had the tendency to stop growing seeing as it was being jostled around. I am hoping that with this setup and her being in her orchid top now that that will stop. And here is a start of another root tip right there. So I'm hoping again that all this will just progress from here on in. And well, stability is key when it comes to root tips. So it doesn't look like the pot is really full. That's not my intention. And I will not be filling up with lava rock afterwards either. This is perfectly fine. I've learned my lesson with the stem rot from her predecessor. So I'm happy with the outcome of this one. And she lives inside from here on in. Not because she can't tolerate the current temperatures, but because I don't move her where she lives. And I'm really sorry if you're noticing flies. In southern Spain, at the end of summer, leading up closer and closer to the winter when the flies get more aggressive, they know more than we do. They know temperatures are going to drop. This is their last hurrah and they become really, really a nuisance. So I do apologize for that. But here we have Vasconcelo Ciana. Look at this. I'm pleased with this. And we're just going to administer a teeny tiny bit of water so that there is water in the reservoir. The leca and the ceramis will provide plenty of humidity without it being too much because we've got the drier media on the surface, which is the lava rock. Yeah, I'm happy that this turned out as intended. And Lelia Xanthina is also going to get a drink, but I'm going to be filling up all the way to the top, seeing as she has viable roots that are touching ceramis, that are touching all that dry media. I don't want to have them desiccate. So she's okay to have a drink. Oh, wow. I was very much on edge about all three of them. What should I do? How should I proceed? But I think this is the best call to action for the foreseeable future. Any roots that will grow will at least have a place to grow into. And I don't have to worry about bumping against a pot and all that. We don't want any risk of losing roots, especially on weak orchids. They need every little bit of energy resource that they can get. I hope that you found this interesting. I don't know if there are any questions based on what I was doing, but should you have some, please, the comments are there for a reason and just to say hi. Oh, I love hearing from you all the time. It's so much fun. Really appreciate having you here. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day. That one condition though, that will apply. You must stay safe. That is not an option. Take care. Bye.